SVD. The great Shane Van Bonen against Max Lechner. Yes. Joined with Alison Fisher and Alvin Ocean for this match. Good afternoon, Carl. I'm really looking hey forward to this one. All the best. Play well. Hi, Alison. Hi, Carl. Yeah, I think could be a good one here. And I think they only played once against each other, and that was at the International Nine Ball. And what a match it was. I don't know if you saw it, Carl. Shane Van Bonen wins the lack. Is it the one way? Did he have a golden break? Hill Hill or something? Uh, yeah. Um... Well, there was uh, there were many things before. Uh, L, uh, Max was up uh, 9-0, and uh, Shane came back after like two mistakes or something from Max, and uh, then Shane was up 10-9. I think he missed the four ball, and uh, Max ran out that rack and uh, had a golden break on Hill Hill. That was incredible. Well, like 200 people Blank were watching. Rack. Shane from Bonning to break. Well, let's hope there's drama in this match like that one then. Might hold his cue ball in the centre of the table like he's been doing. Nevertheless, shot the two ball. Yeah, it's just a little thin one up into the top left, and he's got to get into the cue ball because he's got to try and hold it it's the pink four I'm not this. sure he might go three rails I think he maybe tries to hold it yeah good shot there didn't see the match yesterday from Shane but I heard he played quite loose and uh was a very good match. Some mistakes by Federer, but all over good performance by Shane. Didn't try and do anything fancy with the cue ball there, did he? Just left himself a shot on this five, so it's a little tester. The shots are going in very cleanly into the pockets and I'm sure he's carried over a lot of confidence from yesterday's match because he really kept Fedor off the table. Extension please. Yeah, he's just got to be a little bit careful here because he's doing a case for maybe playing the seven down table in the corner. doesn't he's scared of scratching in the left centre yeah I think he was a little bit scared of scratching him to the side so he tried to just clip the seven ball a little bit but hit it a little bit too thin so big shot here that's a thin cut Part of the pocket. Yeah, that was a great pot, that wasn't it? Never a doubt. And he's uh, in the centre of the pocket every time in this row.
And there it the is, the nine ball disappears in rack one. And let's have a little listen to Shane Van Boning. We haven't had a major tournament over a year, so um, I'm looking to hopefully get back in the finals again. It's actually a great tournament to play. I've always loved to play the, the Whirlpool Masters, and um, it, it's always been a great event. When you play the Whirlpool Masters, there's a lot of pressure situations, um, especially when you're playing on the table condition, it's a tight pockets. All you can do is be positive and play your game and try your best. Two-time World Pool Master champion. He's the only player left in the tournament that has lifted this crown. It's his second wreck. Yeah, and he won it back Shaken to back, right? Leading by one wreck to nil. And he will break. Yeah, back to back. And he's also lost in the final to Niels as well. Wow. With a break there. Yeah, I saw him upstairs earlier practicing his practicing his break on the practice table. Spent hours and hours and hours over the years perfecting it. So I'll do. Max Lechner. Do you know much about him? Does he live near you? Do you practice? Any inside info? <laughs> um, no, of course. Uh, we're very good friends off the table. And, uh, Extension. well, Extension, please. I know pretty much everything about him. And uh, practicing is, is quite tough. We live like uh, four or five hundred kilometers away from each other. Same like uh, Mari, he even is uh, 600 kilometers away. So um, it's quite hard sometimes. Uh, we try to manage it uh, as often as possible uh, before tournaments to come together and have practice. So uh, we had a practice session before the World Cup of Pool. He came uh, to my place with Mario. So we played uh, doubles against him and my sister. So uh, yeah, it's, it's quite tough right now and uh, in Austria with all the lockdowns and uh, especially I think his uh, state uh, got more infected than others so they had some extra lockdowns so it was not always easy to do it but uh, we made the best out of it even we only played six balls at the World Cup of Pool. <laughs> Extension please. It was a good six balls, though, Alpin. It was a good six balls. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there was a, a jump shot and a bank shot. So, uh, yeah, we thought... Actually, after that rack, uh, we won. I think it was to, to tie up the match 1-1. We thought, OK, it's it's pretty much over for them. And, uh, yeah, I think the next time we came back to the table was 6-1. Yeah, so that shot by Max wasn't easy. And Shane's got a good look at this two ball. He's on fire right now. Didn't quite want to land there, but what a great shot down the round. He's making these pockets look bigger than they are. I mean, he got a Russian table at home. I'm not sure if it's also with the four inch pockets, but uh, he definitely has some little advantage here. And uh, of course, he's just playing phenomenal right now, just hitting them so good.
like most pool players when they're in full flow and things are going their way the back arm relaxes and everything seems that little bit much easier needs a cue ball to travel it's a little bit short of pace so this is going to be a thin one that six ball a little bit thick which slowed up the cue ball there Perfectly executed shot there to get on the nine ball to now lead two games to zero. Yeah, Max has got it all to do in this match. Still early stages, of course. Let's hear a few words from Max. In the beginning, I was pretty nervous and had a little shaky start, but uh, I calmed down in, in the middle of the match. And uh, yeah, except for the missed eight ball, I'm very happy with my performance. I think there's uh, some more space to improve, but uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to the quarterfinals now. He's one of my favorite players actually, and uh, yeah, he's a really, really good player, world-class player, and yeah, looking forward to it. All the players here, they dream of lifting the trophy in the end, and uh, so am I. If I focus on myself, I think there is no pressure for me. I just uh, hope I can enjoy the game as most as I can and uh, yeah, perform uh, well. Albin, you're not his favourite player. <laughs> yeah, well, is your good friend your favourite player? Like uh, Darren Thank or Chris? Definitely not. Alison's my Chef favorite. Oh, okay. Love you, Carl. Prince Thank Charming. You. This is a thing of beauty. The Shane Van Boning break. And this looks like it's going to be a nice, easy opening shot for Shane. Yeah, I heard many stories about uh, practicing his break. I think sometimes he practice like for six or eight straight hours only the break did you ever do anything <laughs> for six or eight straight hours except maybe flying definitely didn't play pool for that <laughs> long <laughs> never mind the break <laughs> yeah that's some serious dedication right there and i think we were discussing the other day that his granddad used to rack for him for hours and hours on end So if you want to break like Shane, you better clock up some hours. Well, it certainly won him a lot of tournaments. Just needs this cue ball to slow down. As long as he's got an angle, he can just focus on the pot. Extension called. I think he's pretty much perfect on that five ball because I think he has to play seven into the side pocket. He's almost looking flawless right now. He doesn't look like he's going to miss, does he, at all? Yeah.
Yeah, so it's a nice little wrap right there from SVB. He wins the first three wraps of this match. We'll be back in a moment. Welcome back to Gibraltar. Just look at the view. That's where we're sat. The weather has been beautiful all week. And you see Shane Van Bonen currently playing Max Lechner. He's leading 3-0, so he's continuing the great form. Well, Joshua Filler, he survived a little scare in his quarter-final match. Dennis Grave. Let him off the hook, and he's awaiting the winner of this one. Could we see a Shane v. Joshua semi-final? Thank you, Dean, for break. Shane for Bonning to break, leading by three wrecks to nil. Another monster break, but did he make a ball? Nope, it was dry break there. Got to be really disappointed. Oh, it's a uh, Marcel referee, and it's not Wing Ball John. Yeah, but also Wing Ball John uh, was a little bit strange yesterday. I think it was Hill Hill, right, where Jason didn't make a ball, so. Yeah, it's not easy. Uh, it's not often, rather. 
You see Shane caught dry on the break. I was in a bit of shock. But now we get to have a, a look at Max. Not really had many shots, has he, in the first three. So this is this is a nice chance. a little bit too thick there I think maybe you can still feel the pressure a little bit maybe a little bit nervous yeah and he knows he can't afford to make any mistakes the way that Shane is playing extension please a nicely played shot a lot of pressure on that one yeah great recovery shot there be feeling a little bit nervous not got much experience in this type of tournament it's a big occasion he's playing one of the greatest pool players that's ever played He's negotiating this rack really nicely. He needs to get this under his belt so he can get breaking next. And see if he can put Shane under any pressure. So, Albin, you're from a very famous pool playing family. Your sister, Yasmin Ocean, is a world champion. You're a world champion. Many years ago, I was with her at, in Taiwan. This was previous to you doing well. And she said, yeah, my little brother, once he starts deciding that he wants to play Paul, he's really, really good. And it, it was all about you making that decision in her mind. So what kind of happened that you thought, okay, I'm going to do this now full time? Uh, well, the biggest problems... I had uh, was when I was like uh, 16 to 18 when I was still uh, getting taller and taller and I uh, had big problems with my technique back then and uh, actually was very close to making the decision to stop playing pole. Yeah, we'll get back to Alvin's little story in a minute because we've got the killer, Joshua Filler. He's with our main man, Bridgie. <laughs> Thanks, Carl. Yes, I certainly am with the main man, Joshua Filler. Many, many congratulations. Your victory over Dennis Grabe. Uh, it looked like a frustrating start for you. Yeah, well, I was just not feeling well in the beginning and uh, I just played bad then and it's hard then to think positive. But then Kia came, Pia came to me and just said, you know, just believe in yourself. It's a dream to win this tournament then I was just believing myself and then all of a sudden he uh, hooked himself uh, for the seven ball and then yeah it, it started for me then yeah. <laughs> yeah. so what was your feeling there Josh yeah, I was just feeling bad to be honest uh, I was not really believing myself and yeah but <laughs> since then Pierre came to me and then it changed my, my mindset then it's great to have Pierre with you but we saw this at the World Cup you know the you know the relationship you have and what she says to you the coaching she gives you and just she says that you know all this, but you just need sometimes to hear it again. Yeah, yeah, I, just, that's, that's, yeah. yeah I, I just can re repeat myself and uh, can say that Pierre's just 
without her I wouldn't win any tournaments because every time when I feel bad she's there giving me <laughs> some nice words and yeah <laughs> so uh, without her I wouldn't win I guess it's, uh, it's absolutely fantastic and Dennis Grabe obviously him making that mistake and that's what you're good at you you pounce on others mistakes yeah that's what you need to do otherwise you can't win any tournament because sometimes you have an opponent which doesn't make really mistakes and then when you make a mistake you need to be right there so that's that's really important which you always are Joshua many many congratulations Thank you. Thanks, guys. Back to the match, okay. Max. Well, he's on the board and he's breaking. Albin, Thank carry you. on. Where was we? Yeah, I mean, the first question is who I'm is Kia? Yeah, Kia. <laughs> Training by three weeks. No. Um, yeah, when I was like 16 to 18, I uh, had big problems with the technique. Uh, couldn't make any long shots anymore and uh, was really thinking about getting a job and then put the cue in the in the corner like like you did and uh but then i decided to to get some help and uh get uh well a, a good technique and uh look for the for the mistakes and everything and uh well after like three four years i won my, my first euro tour then and i think that's where i made the decision to turn into a pro and uh, without federation everything was fine we get uh, many things covered the pretty much I would say like 60 to 80 percent per year of all costs so uh, which is huge and uh, yeah then out of nowhere got to the final uh, at the world championships lost there unfortunately to Niels but uh, I think that was the first time that people recognized me uh, that I'm a I'm a good player or can play good and uh, yeah that's where it all started that's an amazing story. So who did you go to for a little bit of help? You mentioned that you went to somebody for a bit of help to sort out your technique. Yeah, I think uh, a little bit I talked to... We had a coach in the Austrian team back then. Uh, I think it's actually a little bit uh, the manager and coach of Max. And a little bit uh, from uh, my sister's coach back then. So we had a little talk and uh, we found uh, what I did wrong back then. And yeah, seems like the rest they is made history. some good work. Yeah, the rest is yeah. history. Fantastic! What a great story. Well, this is just what Max needed. Needed a chance to get himself back in this match, and it was a dry break from Shane. And then this break and run from Max. Seems to have a nice demeanour around the table, very focused. Nice pace. Yeah, he's got a nice setup. Max Lesnar. Yeah, that's nice right. And that's going to give Shane a little bit of something to think about now. We all know how good Shane is as a, as what we call a front runner. But if he can just stay with him in this match and get Shane thinking, you never know. Yeah, 
and he also possesses a nice break. He broke very well in his in his opening match. And from then on, it was all dot to dot. Nice to have a few fans back this week here in Gibraltar. Also, Emily Fraser announced that they're having fans at the World Tour Championships and for finals day. So, if you head over to matchroomtool.com, all the information will be on there. Get yourself a ticket and come see Albin. The sixth track? Yes, sir. Max Lesh has a break. You don't play? Trailing by three racks to two. Not, Not at the moment. Invitation? Not at the moment. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you never know, though, do you, the way the year's panning out. Another great break. Albin, every player we've had in the com box, we've asked them about the pocket size. What, what's it like out there? Was he played on the table? Didn't have many shots again, but um, yeah, I mean, I I like it. Actually, uh, funny th thing is, uh, in our academy, we have uh, three pool tables and uh, one with uh, f pretty much like here, like four or maybe even less, and. Uh, Actually, after four or five years, we made the decision to open it up to make it back to f four and a half or four quarter. And that was like three months ago. And then I came here <laughs> and they, the first time I played four inch pockets. Um, no, it's it's fine. Of course, in the in the first uh, in the first moment, you think what's going on here. Um, but uh, I think after a while, it's going to be nice. And I hope it's going to be the same at the World Championships. But it might not. So do you think you're going to be closing those pockets back up when you get back? Yeah, could be. I mean, if it's if it's something uh, where Matchroom's going to say, okay, that, that's the rule for the upcoming events, I'm, I'm pretty sure we're going to do it. Yeah, I think we've seen a really great standard of pool here. There have been Extension. balls missed, but that's expected. But uh, I felt like in the... Um, the doubles last week that there were more balls missed yeah yeah definitely so I think this can only raise the standard of the game yeah I think that's definitely definitely how it should be and it also shows a lot about the technique I think of players too things that need work on and approach to the game So is your sister playing in the World Championships? Extension. Yes, she's. I think there are like eight women who are playing in it. And uh, yeah, she's she's playing. I think we go there on the 4th. And she participated recently in the championship, the league, which you were the winner of after a, was it 52 <laughs> matches 52 yeah <laughs> that's amazing and it was horrible <laughs> well we saw you, we saw you go through a lot of emotions that week oh i uh, went through every every stage of emotion um especially the second day uh it was just like the first day i, I really first day I, pl I played good i made a mistake in the end i uh, got punished for it and uh, when i walked back to the room it felt like I worked like 13 hours for absolutely nothing, you know, and uh, I didn't sleep well, pretty much nothing actually, and then to start over again from zero, it was just horrible, and uh, then it didn't go my way in, in many, many different things throughout the day, and actually I had to fight to even survive the second day, and uh, yeah, it was, was a tough day, the second one, and then it was like 
just a little bit, you know, I was I lost in the semis, I think I lost again in the final. Um, it was a very tough tournament. Meanwhile, back at the table here, that bank shot, let's take another look at that. Yeah, great shot there. I think he's he just got the jump cue out. Maybe no extension anymore because he ran to the chair. Oh wow. Wow, did that hit the back of the pocket yep, of the jaw? I can't did. wait to see the replay of this. Oh both like uh, around the pocket. I think it hit the right. Wow. Yeah, it was fortunate the two didn't go off the table. It kind of hit the back rubber and roll round and come back. <laughs> yeah, very unlucky there. Shane knows the importance of this rack now because Max had got himself back in this match. Plays it off three rails. Ball just touches the bottom for an easy nine ball. Shane goes back, two racks in front. This match is poised nicely. It's 4 2. You have a cat. She's great, but she could get fleas. So you get an itch subscription. It sends tailored flea treatment to your door every month. Set up your subscription today at itchpet.com and get your first month free. Could I, Spencer Matthews, create a non-alcoholic alternative to gin that tastes just like gin and then star in the film advertising it?
wins this jump shot. Where the two ball at the back of the pocket come back out for Shane to then put a long one and clear up the table. There you see this match 4 2 to Shane. The first match of the day, Joshua Filler. He survived the scare in beating Dennis Grabe 7 5. And he sat waiting for the winner Thank of this match. Frank. Shane van Boning is leading by 4x to 2 and he will break. doesn't look like he can get to the potting angle to pot this two in the bottom right. No, it does go in the bottom left, but where's the cue ball going? He might go for a bank shot here. Or he's playing safety, just get the two ball back up table if the cue ball behind the six. Yeah, it was a nice shot, that. Never easy trying to hold the cue ball behind another ball like that. So Max is faced with a one-wheel kick. So, Alvin, what are you looking at here? Because you're one of the best kickers, aren't you, out there Extension. safety players? Of course, first of all, I think you've got to watch out for the, for the side pocket. And I think with the seven ball there... It's not getting much easier. Tries to get the two ball on the right side, so it's a down back table. The cue ball maybe behind the nine. Not sure if he's going to try to hit it hard. Oh wow! Foul shot. Yeah, I mean that's of course the worst no thing that could happen. Event. Not sure if he really tried to make the two ball there. Start the clock. That's a very big mistake that stage of the match because Shane, Shane just played flawless before and uh, it looks like a 5-2 now. Yeah, I'm sure that Shane's going to punish him for that mistake. This is just all about controlling the cue ball. And just making sure you don't do anything silly. 5-2 in a race to seven is quite a healthy lead. He certainly likes his chalk, doesn't he? He's chalking up a lot, but that's a lesson for everyone out there. To stop any miscues, he does that after every shot, as all players do, all pro players do. And I don't know many players that still use master chalk. On the pro level. I do sometimes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
Land ball disappears in the heart of the pocket. SVB. Well, he's back in front again with a three rack lead. Leads Max 5 2. And our boy Bridger, well, he's with Joshua Villa. Yes, thanks, Carl. Joshua Filler will play the winner of this match. Joshua, what's your thoughts on this match so far? Well, there's not much to say. I mean, Shane is playing really strong. Max had two opportunities, but uh, once he hooked himself, well, had an awkward jump, and uh, yeah, just Shane is breaking very well and uh, take every chance he, can, he gets. Are you taking notes mentally in your head, looking at the players in, term, in case of who you play? No, actually, I'm just expecting that they're all going to play really good. So I expect also myself to play really good. That's what you need to do when you want to win, win this tournament. So Yeah, I mean, it looks like it could be Shane. We never know, but 5-2. Um, that could be a special semi-final, that one. Yeah, of course. Me and Shane had a, has a kind of a story, um, like a king story. Who's the king? Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I would really looking forward to, to play Shane, of course. Cool. We, we, we would love it. It would be really, really special. But that's what you're about. You want these special matches, don't you? Yeah, of course. I always want to play the best players. Um, otherwise, you just want to see who's the best. And uh, in the end, of course, you want to win this tournament. So and, yeah, and it's going to be exciting for sure. Yeah, and you thrive on it too. Like when you played Carl in the World Cup final, I got the feeling I want to play Carl because he's probably played the best all week. Yeah, of course. I mean, uh, we played the best um, team there because Great Britain played really good in the quarters and in the semis. And we had the roles in the final, so we won in the end. A bit lucky, but uh, yeah, we also deserved it because we played the days before really good as well. Brilliant, Josh. Thank you very much. Oh, thank no, I've given Carl a compliment. Ah! Love you too, Bridgie. Thank Thanks you, the 8th Rex, Chef and Morning to Break, leading by 5 Rex to 2. Yeah, Joshua Filler, he wants to play Shane in the semi finals. We know he does, and we all want to see it. Well, maybe Albin doesn't, but I sort of do. No disrespect to Max. Another big break here from Shane. Got a shot on two ball, a little bit tricky. I think it's all about just making the two ball automatically have gets position on the four, I believe. Perfect speed. Wow. Really doesn't get much better than that. Totally in sync. Never hit the rail there, the two ball. Yeah, he looks sharp. He looks super motivated. Let's just have a quick talk about away from the table and I noticed that you after the championship league pool you went away on a fitness retreat with your sister yeah so tell us a little bit about that oh well it was uh, just finally time to get the a clear mind again uh, the lockdown has been pretty tough I think for everyone but uh, we had the chance to go to Croatia uh, we have been there already for the last four or five years like once or sometimes uh, twice a year and uh, it's just a very beautiful place uh, we go there with the with bikes we go swimming we go running and and of course some some relaxing time in the in the spa and enjoying the weather have some nice dinner and of course also talk about the the future for the upcoming plans and uh, sponsors whatever Can we go next time? <laughs> yeah, sure. I think uh, we would need a second driver. <laughs> no, it's a, it's a very special and nice place there. I think uh, for every one who has been there can say the same. And uh, Croatia is a beautiful place. Also Austria is, but uh, I'm not that guy who wants to make holidays in the in the in his own country, you know. And it's only a four-hour drive. And it feels magic. Wins the 
Well, SVB. He's on the hill, so we might get to see the matchup. He just needs one more rack. And that is the SVB famous break. This was a lovely shot. Very thin and controlled the cue ball to perfection. I think that's the one thing that's kind of underrated with, with Shane's game. He's got really good cue ball control. Yeah, we're going to see if Shane wins here. It's a big match coming up with uh, Shane against Joshua. And like Joshua said, they have a big story or had a big story in the past with the King's Chair and their thing, whatever. And. Uh, going to be a great one. Is it still race to seven in the semis? It is still race to seven. The final will be a race to nine. And following this match, well, it'll be Shane's buddy, Skylar Woodward. He's playing Alex Kazakis. They met in the semi-finals the last time this event was played in 2019. Kazakis got the better of Skyler that day. Skyler wants, well, he wants revenge. Thank you, Dinah Freck. Chef von Boning is leading by six wrecks to two, and he will break. We were just discussing yesterday with Billy Thorpe how Shane looks to the right when he breaks. Have you noticed that, Albin? I actually just saw it before you said it, uh, that he looked to the, to the right. Maybe it's like an aiming point if he is on the right spot uh, with the cue or with the hand or whatever. Um, yeah, of course, that's something. I think he also turns the cue ball. Um, a little bit uh, with all the the points on the cue ball. Maybe he just wants. It's like, how do you say, it? superstitious. Like uh, he wants to have everything the the same way always, so he knows he did everything right before the shot, so he can go down with a clear mind and make the shot. Like uh, I don't know if people notice, but Carl always turns his cue. So the 314 is upside. Yeah, I do for some reason. I don't know why. I just <laughs> do, do, you know, do you know where I think that comes from? In snooker, I used to do that. It was the grain of the wood. I used to have the same Extension every time. Cold. But we don't really have that in poor cues. But you've found your own way to do that. Yeah, and the same when I when I was playing and I was breaking, I always used to do the same thing with the cue ball. and. When I got thrown in the World Cup last week and the very first break, I just naturally did the same again with the cue ball. Old habits die hard. Yeah, so back at the table, this has gone slightly wrong. This is a, a tester for Shane now. Oh. Yeah, there you could see the ball just caught the jaw of the middle pocket. A little bit of life left for Max. Extension called. It's got to be about the first ball that he's missed, I think. This looks very inviting for the bank shot. Yeah, very good shot there. <coughs> yeah, big chance now. Thank you. 
Yeah, he didn't want to be so close to that rail there. You could see him just shaking his head. Makes it a little more complicated. Yeah, so this nine ball to keep him in the match. He's there, Max. He's still there, buddy. We trail SVB six, Rax to three. I've always wondered, do hair loss treatments actually work? The answer is here at manual.co. We offer a clinically proven hair loss solution delivered discreetly from our UK registered pharmacy and used by thousands of happy customers who all treat hair loss from the comfort of their home with ongoing support from trusted clinicians. Get a free online consultation and treat hair loss today at manual.co. That missed four ball wasn't easy, just caught the middle jaw. Another shake of the head from Shane. This was a nice bank shot, and it was that bank shot that gave Max a chance to stay in this match. He's going to need the remaining four racks. Well, you see, 6 3, Joshua Fuller beat Dennis Brave 7 5. Dennis had a chance in that match, wasn't to beat. Are we going to see the Shane Van Boning Joshua filler match? Well, Joshua is sitting on the sidelines in the arena here. Thank you, track number watching 10. how Shane's playing. Migration to break, trailing by six racks to three. To see who will be the Koenig, king of the table.
Having said that, Shane has to overcome Max Lechner right now. Max just broke and has a open shot on the one ball. Yearned. We might not see Shane back at the table. It's winner breaks. I'm sure he's more than capable of running a four pack. But can he do it on this table in this moment? Fine, he's landed on the right side of this three ball. That's why he played it in the side pocket. Once he's potted this red three ball, he's going to be perfect on the pink four. You said yesterday, Alison, pool is all about momentum and at 6-2 Shane was in the balls. It was a tricky layout, but I think we was all sat here thinking, is this match over? And now we're sat here thinking, well, is there a little bit of a turning point? be interesting if he runs this out which I'm fully expecting him to do he gets to break and then the pressure would be on Shane if he manages to grab the next rack been joining us in the box um, you're one of the very most patient players that I've ever watched how do you feel about being a front runner versus coming from behind oh, that's a hard one um, well especially here Max of course has the ability to come back uh, he's a phenomenal player um, He's very talented. Uh, I think he's super Max motivated Lechner, right now because he didn't really get the chance. So, um, but uh, yeah, it's a it's a tough one to call. I think Shane, of course, he's still a little, feeling a little bit comfortable. Uh, but I think it's all about the next break. I think if he runs out the next wreck, wreck I think Shane will feel a little bit. More nervous. Yeah, I think you're right, Albin. I think that break and run there from Max. He's just getting to the point now where if he can just get another one on the board, that, that sort of levels the game up, doesn't it? Even though you're still one behind, it almost feels like it's hill hill if it goes 6-5 yeah it's and that's the tough part of uh, winner's break because you can always stay in control of the match if you're on the table so I definitely ex expect that uh, Max will make a ball on the break if he doesn't have a shot he would play push out or a safety whatever so I think Shane will come back, back to the table but uh, I think not because uh, Max missed the ball or something. I think it will be like a push out or safety. Well, let's see if you're correct. He's been breaking very good. 
in his opening match and he's continued that form in this match right on cue oh, he lost no. the cue ball but this might actually work out okay oh maybe not I think the four is in the way I think he can easily play a cushion first here see this pink ball ball comes down flicks off the brown seven and hooks max but where the two ball is your big big favorite to pop this two ball it's not difficult to land on the three yeah, yeah but it's all about the speed here i think he doesn't want to land straight on the three ball a little bit short yeah on that type of shot I think you should always try and hit the the rail where the three ball is now if the four <coughs> passes the nine extension please which it does a uh, big tester here. I think he wants to go between the four and the nine to leave the cue ball next to seven. So it's a little bit like a two-way shot if he's gonna miss it. He might leave Shane a tough one. And looks like my expectations were wrong. Yeah, it was a tough shot, that one. It was a shot before, really. He didn't get closer to his work, and there you see, catches the rail, and it stays up. Yeah. So wrong predictions here, and a uh, yeah, big chance now for Shane, and it could be the last one. you hear the beep it was right before he shot the three ball sometimes it's very very tough it comes right on the shot it's very loud too it's quite startling isn't it when you're down on the shot yeah because sometimes when you're so focused you you just look up on the screen you see like 15 you go down on the shot and then on the very last stroke him just beep and the uh, yeah, a very big stroke here from Shane. Yeah, he really cued that ball nicely because he would have felt that was like a key ball. And there you can see just on the side of Shane's cue, he's got his signature and the white bit of the cue. Actually, the five ball I would have expected him to play, but a little bit inside English because he had a lot of uh, angle on the six to go to seven. So, a little tester here again. Just good enough. He's a nice, powerful stroke on this ball. He's got to get the cue ball moving. Oh, what a wonderful shot that was. Wow. It really was. And he played it with left English. I would have never, ever played it with left English. Yeah, this is a masterclass in shot making. Could be a very good match against Joshua, I think. 
Shame the nine ball is there. SVB with a fist bump. It was a good match. Both players played their part in a classic, but we're going to get to see SVB versus Joshua Phillips.